But hello, hello, how you doing? How you doing? This is the S. Anthony Thomas. This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast, episode number three, four, three, three, forty three. You dag on right. This is the three hundred and forty third time I've done this crap. But guess what? It's also the three hundred and forty third time you've listened to this crap. And I want to say to you, all the places that you are, thank you much. Thank you much. You know how much I love every last one of you bastards. Yes, I do. Folks, uh, some of you are in countries that are warm all the time. And for that, I would like to say, ha ha ha, F you. <laughs> and I only say that because uh, on the East Coast of the United States of America, which is where I live. And also for those of you, because I have a lot of all people are listening in California who don't have to deal with snow. F you too. I used to live there. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Moving on. Well, we had snow here on the East Coast and I don't like snow. I don't like snow because I'm 50 years old and I don't feel like shoveling. I don't feel like doing nothing, even approaching shoveling. I don't like it. And I wish shoveling was outlawed. I wish they would make people that were young people have to come to your house and shovel your crap, even if they don't want to. You're young. You ain't doing anything. If you're walking around outside, it means you don't have a job, punk. Well, guess what? Get to shoveling. But I don't like the snow because, well, the, the recent snow was the kind of snow I really dislike. If there's snow and on the snow's on the ground for a while and it takes a while to dig out, there's something about that that changes people's perception and makes them drive a little more carefully because they've already had their near accidents and they decide to calm down a little bit. That's what happens. But for some reason, when the snow comes the first day, people's kind of turn into complete morons and drive like morons. You see guys in trucks who decide, hey, I know that the ground is wet and cold and icy, but that doesn't mean anything to me. For some reason, because I'm in a truck, the laws of physics don't apply to me. So I'm not even going to drive like I normally drive. I'm going to drive faster and more angrily now that the ground is unsafe. Because I almost got hit and sideswiped by a bunch of jerk offs who decided to drive around like jerk offs. And what made it worse was. It was new tire day for me. I had put together some money during the course of the year because I knew at the end of the year I was going to have to get four new tires. And getting four new tires is not a cheap proposition. So you kind of got to get yourself ready for it. You start preparing for it. Like right now, I'm not thinking about it because I'm not going to have to get tires anytime soon. But you know, after about 45, 15,000 miles, which is what the warranty is on the tires, you're going to have to get some more tires. So when you start getting around half the halfway mark, you got to start thinking, let me put a little money aside for the tires. Yes. So I go to the tire place. Now, when I get my four tires, I'm thinking it's not going to be a big deal. I'll just drive in and get the four tires. You can't just drive in. You got to make an appointment. Oh. So I say, okay, I would like to make an appointment for tomorrow. And the guy goes, you know what? I'm going to call you and let you know when we have an opening, Mr. Thomas. I'm like, thank you very much. Okay. I figure since he said that and it was his suggestion, he's going to call me the same day. <laughs> I thought wrong. I go into the website and look at the business on that side. I'm going to make an appointment on the website. Not a problem. Don't have to talk to anybody. Don't have to do any crap. I'll just put in the appointment and everything get back up. It doesn't work. Oh. So I pick up the phone and I talk to a very, very kind professional gentleman. Mr. Thomas, you need to get tires for your Toyota Camry. Yes, I do. And you, you know how many you need to do? Two tires? As a matter of fact, I need four tires. You need four tires, Mr. Thomas? Well, that's fantastic. We can come in and go. Blah, 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 blah. And he starts giving me all the, the, the all that information. Gives me a time to come in. I tell him I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And he says, good time, Mr. Thomas. Good time, good time. I show up and it is in fact a good time. There's only one car ahead of me. Only one car. But... The lady driving that car has about 9,000 questions. 
and she hasn't given him the key yet. Now, if she had given the key to the guy and asked questions as they were working on her car, nothing would have changed on her end. They would have actually started the process because the questions that she asked had nothing to do with the things they were going to have to do first. They could have actually had it begun the process, but no, she's going to hold everybody after her hostage to her questions and her more questions and questions that have nothing to do with what's going on with the car. And then all of a sudden she notices she thinks the guy's cute. And now all of a sudden she's flirting and she's flirting hard and she's not going to give him the key. And he's not really into it. He just wants to get the key. And he starts to think maybe I should flirt back to get the key. But he realizes he thinks better of it. And he finally gets the key from her and he goes in and he starts working on a car. And I look up at the clock and I realize it's 20 minutes of my time just chopped up because she's going to try to do that crap. And I want to drop kick up, but you can't drop kick people because it's wrong. As it turns out, they go and do some of the stuff to her car. They come back out to ask her questions. And as it turns out, she didn't even have her credit card with her. Oh. So they're going to have to take a car back down, put the parts back into a car, take a car back down, give her back a car, give her back the keys and send her the hell out of there. And that's okay because I'm next. <sighs> 35 minutes of my time. Oh. Finally, they go and they uh, see the guy heading towards my car because as I, as this was happening, I gave my key to the receptionist. Yay. And she's a nice lady. Hey, hey. And she's a sweetheart. Hey, hey, hey. And now he's going. I see him walking towards the mighty Toyota Camry because he's going to put some tires on the mighty Toyota Camry. And it's going well. I see the guy with the with the tire machine. He pulls out the rim, puts on the glue, but then bump up, put on the air. It's got bump up, the job, the bab. Puts on one tire. Fantastic. 15 minutes. Second tire, 30 minutes, fantastic. Third tire, I'm not even going to watch him anymore. This is already over. They got three tires on. I don't got to look again. Not a problem. I'm going to just kind of sit here and look at these people on this TV program. Just find out who's the father, who's not the father, who's the double father, quadruple father, all of that crap. And I look up at the TV and I watch these people ruining their lives on national television. And I'm going, that's a shame. But guess what else is a shame? In about eight minutes, I'm not going to be here and I'm not going to remember you losers, you dumb bastards going on television, telling everybody that you had sex with eight women. You had sex with 12 dudes and you don't know who's the father and you don't know if you're the father and all of that crap doesn't matter. And I now see the pleasant young man walking toward me with my car key. Oh, yeah. But he ain't smiling. Oh, no. Mr. Thomas? Yes? Um, there's a bit of a problem with your, uh, I said a problem with my, uh, what, young man? Well, um, <laughs> um, one of the tires is defective. And I'm going, well, who cares if the tires are defective? Just, you took them off. What difference has it got to make with me? They're defective. You're going to recycle them anyway. But no, 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 not your tires. Um, <laughs> um, one of the tires is defective, uh, that we, that we ordered for you. So we can only put on three tires right now. Oh, so we're going to need you to come back tomorrow afternoon. And I said, well, that one tire in the back was horrible. And I'm, I I don't want that tire on the car at all. So if you have to move the tires around on the car again, that's fine. But the back passenger side tire of the group was the car of the tire that sucked the most. Get it off. Get it off. Get it off. We're going to put the best of the tire, the rest of your other tires on that thing there, okay? And I thought that was great. Not a problem because one of the tires, when I'm in, when that one, there was one tire that was way better than the other one's cool. That'll be good enough and I'll come back tomorrow. Not a problem. Now, why did I say that that one tire, I wanted it off? I'll explain. That one tire was the bad kid of the family of tires. Right. The other three tires were older tires. They still had enough tread on them to pass an inspection. But why wait? Just get them off of there. Right. They did the jobs. And did they go down a little bit when it was cold? Of course they did. Not as more so than a new tire would. So it's time to change them. But that one tire, the passenger rear tire was the bad kid of the group. That tire was a piece of crap. That tire was like that bad kid in class that wanted to get your attention and did all sorts of horrible things just to get your attention. Other tires went down a little bit. I checked the gauge. You know, they went down by about a half a little bit. And 
they're back to normal. This tire, 12 pounds. It's supposed to be 35. It's down to 12. Ew. So I fill it back up and two hours later, back down to 12 pounds again. Oh, I was wondering why the car was sliding. It's because of that back tire that keeps loose. I can't even find a hole. Maybe it's the valve stem. I don't know where the air is coming out, but the air is coming out because that tire is a piece of crap. It's like that bad kid. You ever seen that bad kid in your family or that bad kid that you see in public or that bad kid on the bus or that bad kid? You know that the kid's going to do something bad. You don't know when it's coming, but you know what's coming and you can't stand when that kid smiles because you know that kid's sucker in the end, right? The kid's being nice to you just so we can set you up for later, right? That's the kind of kid that goes, hey, I got your chair for you, right? And you know, as he's smiling and you don't know why until you sit down and you get an ass full of thumbtack, little punk. And you're going, oh, that, why would you do that? That's not funny. <laughs> and he knows he's going to get grounded and going to get his toy taken away. But he's such a piece of crap. He doesn't mind because he just loves torturing you. You know what I'm talking about. That's what that tire was. Because if the tire just went down all the time, I would know, okay, there's a problem there. But sometimes that tire would set me up. I'd put some air in the tire. I'd come out in the morning thinking I'd have to put some more air in the tire. And the tire was fine. I'd drive around inside in my home area and the tire was fine. And it kind of lulled me into a false sense of tire security and the second i drove anywhere outside of my normal area i could all i knew something was up because i rolled down my window and i could hear something come from the rear passenger side of my car from the outside and i could have sworn i heard something go ha 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 got him and i'm like what the hell's back there who said ha 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 got him yeah i bet it was the tire because the second I drove outside of my home area, that tire went down to 12 pounds again when it's supposed to be at 35. That piece of crap. I said, I'll fix you, tire. I got some fixer flat and I put that fixer flat in the tire and the tire was like, you bastard. I said, ha ha ha. That's right. Wherever that hole is in it that I can't find, it's now full with the fixer flat, bitch. Take that, punk. And I think the tire got mad because it wouldn't go down for a couple of days and I thought I had won. I thought I had the victory. Oh no. That tire was setting me up again. I go to the store, put a lot of stuff in the trunk, little heavy stuff in the trunk. I come back down nine pounds. You piece of crap. You only went down to 12 pounds before. And the tire said, ha ha, take that bitch. And I said, oh, I got something for your punk ass. And that's when I decided to get the tires. I was like, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to get all four tires. Now, I want that tire out of my life. I want that tire gone, punk. <sighs> Back to the tire place. Mr. Thomas, I, I took the best of your four tires and I put it on there so, you know, you can come back tomorrow and everything's great. And I look at the tire that's on there and it's not the evil tire. The evil tire is someplace getting chopped up and recycled. Yeah, and I hope it hurts when it chops the tire up, too. I hope when the tire is getting chopped up to be melted down and recycled into some tires that don't have attitudes, problems, that it thinks about me. I wish I could be there as they were chopping up the tires so I could look down and go, yeah, that's what you get, punk. Chop them up, chop them up good. In fact, can I chop them a little bit? Mr. Thomas, is this the tire that was giving you problems? Yes, it is. Would you like to chop them up some? You're damn right. Now, are you chopping me? This is hurting. Take that tire. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Thomas, you can stop chopping now. Yeah, well, you can mind your business. I'm chopping them some more. <laughs> You're damn right. Now, this was the day that it snowed. Remember when I started the podcast, I talked about a snow day. This was the snow day where everybody's driving like an idiot. And I'm overconfident because I have three brand new fresh tires and one tire that should be pretty good and get me back there tomorrow. I'm thinking everything's great. Everything's fantastic. I'm telling people, you know what? I am going to come over there. Yes. You got your four tires? I got three tires and I got the best of the rest. The best of the rest was, was put on there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Great. I'll be there. <laughs> I park. I pull over. I'm going to pull over at this little poppy store, this little pop, this little corner store. I'm going to pull over at this corner store, get myself a little cup of coffee, get the cup of coffee, drink the cup of warm coffee with the snowy day, enjoy the beauty of the snow, and then drive to my friend's house. Yeah, I get in the car. Oh, no. 
What's going on? Did I drive over something? I didn't drive over anything. Do you want to know what happened, people? Of course. We're your collective audience, S. Anthony. What happened? We're all over the place. Okay, audience, I'll tell you what happened. The tire that they put on that wasn't a new tire was flat to the rim. And I'm four blocks away. Four blocks away. Oh, no. What did the S-Man do? Did the S-Man decide to call a tow truck and try to get a tow truck in the snow, knowing that the idiots around driving stupidly and crashing into each other and the tow trucks are going to be occupied? Do I want to stand here and wait and then spend whatever amount of money it costs to get a tow truck? Do I want to do that? Yes, I have a plan, but I don't want to use up any of my toes for this. Uh, can I get the car back to the tow place, to the tire place? Can I get it back there? It's four blocks away. People are driving like idiots. Can I get it back there? Can I get it back there over the rough roads without banging up that rim and making the rim damage? Can I get it back? I sit in the car. I say a few choice expletives because I'm ticked off because I should have a... <sighs> I get back in the car. I turn on the engine zoom and I'm thinking four blocks to freedom, four blocks, because even if they have to keep the car, which I'm not going to let them do, at least they'll be able to do something for me. Four blocks. I pull into traffic. That's what it sounds like. I'm trying to stay straight. I'm trying to make sure that I drive the car in a way that doesn't put any undue pressure on that one flat to the rim tire oh potholes oh i got to avoid those drive around didn't see that one oh no i'm hoping the rim's not messed up three blocks now there's people behind me hong, hong, hong. come on man i can see that your tire is flat and under the same circumstances if it was to happen to me i would hope someone would have some compassion but since it's not me and it's you i'm gonna be a complete piece of crap and act like you should be driving faster even though you're stuck you don't want to get stuck in the snow so i'm gonna honk the horn the whole time but of course i don't care f them i gotta worry about me i don't even react to the bastards i keep doing what i'm doing two blocks i make the turn unfortunately it's a right turn right i turn my car the guy behind me that was honking his horn hits a pothole but all dum dum i hope his tires flat that piece of crap okay i don't hope his tires flat that's me but i do hope he had a nice scare i'm driving down the block but now the people behind me are compassionate there's people on the sides of the road looking at me like i've come back from battle they're like oh, good job buddy they're looking at me like i hope you make it dude one block i can now see the place and now they get to a corner with an incredibly long red light come on come on come on now the red light's not any longer than it normally is but it seems like it's longer now come on come on green light pull into the parking lot Turn off the car, walk inside. Oh, uh, Mr. Thomas? Yes. Well, did you forget something? Mm-hmm. What did you forget? I forgot to get a tire that wouldn't go flat four blocks away from here. What do you mean? Here's the keys. I'll be sitting down and waiting. Oh, oh, um, 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 yeah, oh. Exactly. I'll be waiting for you to put another good backup tire on there. One that won't go flat. How about that? Okay, Mr. Tom, I'm high, but there's this car in front of you, okay? I don't care if there's two cars in front of me. Fix the tire. And uh, if the rim's effed up, you fix it. And you better not charge me anything, okay? Oh, no problem, Mr. Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Now I sit down, and I'm waiting. In the waiting room, and I'm annoyed. I take out my other phone. I have an old phone that I use as an iPod, right? I have my regular phone that I use for everyday activities, phone calls, surfing, and all that kind of crap. But I have my old phone that I use just as a music player. 
Okay, and I'm listening. I'm trying to listen to a podcast. You know, the kind of thing you're listening to right now, but someone else's. Haha. <laughs> and I'm listening to it. And it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. And I see other people walk into the waiting room and one lady sits down right next to me. Not a problem. She's sitting a little too close and leaning on me. Not a problem. I don't really give a crap. And now she's talking into my right ear. I'm obviously very, very engaged in what I'm listening to. If I sit next to somebody and they're obviously engaged in what they're listening to, I don't keep hitting them on the arm and trying to start the conversation conversation with him but she's not me she's somebody else and she don't give a crap that i don't want to talk right now because i'm angry and this podcast is damn good i look over at it and i'm being very polite i give it a polite hey i'm not angry at all smile in other words the smile that lies hey what's going on hey what are you doing in here uh no she asked me that at a tire place what i'm doing in here right away i already know where this conversation is going no place uh, I'm getting my tires. Oh, you're getting tires, huh? Yeah. <sighs> what you listening to? And I'm hoping in the fact that she's asking what I'm listening to and the fact that I am listening to something is going to get her to stop talking. Guess what? It's not a podcast. What's that? <sighs> I now explain what a podcast is. Oh, okay. It's like radio, right? Yeah, something like that. And this was really good. I was really good listening. It's my cue. That's my way of saying, leave me alone. Let me listen. You know, I tell you, back in my day, uh, we used to have these old radio shows, you know, and like, it's not like those podcasts that you, oh, podcasts. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is. It's not like those things that you're doing because, you know, we used to have the radio show back in the day when, I mean, I'm, I'm a lot older than you. And we had these radio shows and we had this guy, he was named Jack Silver. And you ever heard of Jack Silver? No. Okay. Oh, that's right. He probably retired before you were born anyway. And uh, I was part of his singing group. We were called the Silverettes. Now, let me let me listen to the song. Mm-hmm. Buy those silver, silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Buy that silver, silver stuff. Put the silver, 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 silver stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, then we have another one. More silver, silver stuff. Thanks for buying silver stuff. And then bop, bop, I'm silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. That's kind of like the first song. Oh, no, it's different because we said more. We said more silver stuff this time because, you know, they had it. They bought silver stuff and it was very popular. So we wanted them to buy more silver stuff from from the from our from the host. His name was Jack Silver, you know. And um, yeah. OK, well, that was pretty interesting. You know what? I had a hit song called Silver Silver Stuff. You mean the one you just sang? Oh, no, it was the long version of it. We had a hit single back in 1901. It was incredible. Um, Can you look up things on your phone? Now, all of a sudden, I've turned into her research department. Uh, and I'm not going to say no, because I know she does. <sighs> and I'm looking at people in the other chairs. You ever seen somebody see something? You ever see, have, be, see be, been the person that sees something annoying or embarrassing happening to someone else, right? And you want to laugh at them, but you want to hide the fact that you're laughing at them? You ever seen that? Yeah, well, these per- people were not hiding the fact that they were laughing at the fact that I was she got to sit next to me and wasn't annoying them instead. It would have been much better if she sat next to them and annoyed the crap out of them so I could laugh and listen to my podcast, the thing that I was listening to. But I was the one that got stuck to sitting next to her, so here we go. Yeah, you can look up stuff on your phone. Oh, that's great. You know, you can just type in stuff on your phone and you can look up stuff. Yes, 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 you can. Like on the web, the internet web thing? Yes. So the phone that you have right there, that phone can go on the internet web thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish she would just hurry up and ask me to look up the thing that she's building up today. Could you look up Jack Silver? Yeah. Here you go. There, that's him. That's him. That's Jack Silver. That's the guy. Remember that the song I just sang? Silver, silver, silver stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember the song. I remember the song. I remember the song. Oh, let me finish. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Even more silver stuff than last time. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, could, um can you find songs on there? Uh, yeah, you can find some. Could you look up Jack Silver Silver Stuff Trio? I was the girl. Okay, I'll, I'll look up the chat. Here we go. Oh, can you play that? Yeah. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Buy some silver, silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Oh, yes, that's good. That's the song. that. Yeah, that was me singing it when I was younger. You know, as this younger. Hit this one, too. The other one. Okay. <sighs> okay. 
All right, here we go. Buying more silver, silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. We like silver, silver stuff. Silver, silver, silver stuff. Okay, that's great. We had 12 songs of silver stuff. No, no, I can't play all of them. You know, okay, well, that's very nice of you that you played the songs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm praying the guy, and I see the guy walk in, and the, the, the tire goes, Hey, Sir Thomas, okay, uh, we gave you another tire. What we did this time was we took the tire that was the, the, not the new tire, and we put it on the back because it'll have less stress on it, but you should be fine if you, when you come back tomorrow to get the thing and to get, get the tire. Okay, great. That, that's fantastic. Okay, great. So I get the tire. Finally, all four tires problem solved it's just great it's amazing how even little things like that things that really aren't that big of a deal feel really good right i walked around the car looked at the four brand new tires and i didn't have to look at that murder tire that was on there that tire that blew up if i would have been driving on the freeway and that tire blew up i would have been crashing like 80 cars so the murder tire was gone and all the life-saving good grip tires were there. It was great. I walked around. Uh, it was a little bit of nostalgia for the old tires. But these new tires, it's like getting a new job. You know, you had an old job. And even though the people in that old job were pains in the butt, you kind of miss them when they're gone, right? You miss them for a while just because you're used to them. But at the new job, you go into your break room, you open up the refrigerator, and your sandwich is still there? What? No one accidentally ate half of your sandwich? What? Hmm. Interesting. You're in the office doing your work, and there's no one bothering you between phone calls to talk about crap you're not interested in talking about and annoying you when you're working... Hmm. The manager there is actually a professional manager, treats everyone with respect, and actually facilitates doing a good job instead of being a douche. Hmm. Right? These new tires were like being in a new relationship. Because it really is a new relationship. Because you see the tires all day, every day. How many days a week do you not drive your car? You drive your car every day, right? You have The longest running relationship that you have right now, it's not with your new girlfriend. It's not even with your wife. It's with your tires, right? Having a new tires is like having a new girlfriend after the last girlfriend treated you like crap. Right? The old tires sometimes they got a little, you know, slid a little bit on the road when they weren't supposed to slide. You hit the brakes. They didn't break the way they were supposed to because you kind of got, it kind of got worn down a little bit, just like your last relationship. She's starting to say things that you don't want her to say. And she's starting to say things in public you don't want to say. And you try to hit the brakes and get her to stop saying those things. But she slides right into saying those things. Yeah, because, you know, Frank's father used to be a male stripper and, and a male prostitute. But I mean, it's nice that he's not. He's a pastor now, but he used to sell his booty all the time. What the hell? I told you that in confidence. You would you bring that? Well, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just telling the people about your father, the fact that your father was a booty seller. Because it's nice that he's, he went from booty selling and, and well, we know he did a lot of other things also, all the drugs and stuff. What the, what the, you just heard me get upset about the other thing about telling people that he was the male prostitute and now you're going to talk about the drugs. I didn't talk about the armed robbery. What the hell is wrong with you? Could you just stop talking now? Well, they don't even know about, he got away with the armed robbery. What you, you just, oh, right? And that bad tire in the back was like, like I said, like a bad kid. But now I got four brand new tires. It's like getting in a new relationship. You're sitting there with your significant other. And there's a topic that's going to, you could bring up the fact that your daddy was a booty selling, drug dealing, criminal thing, right? And they bring up some stuff where your old girlfriend would have just slid right into it. But the new girlfriend can look at you and you look at her and she just knows. Anybody else here have any interesting things happen with their dads? You know what? What? Well, Frank's dad is just a really nice guy. And you look over her like, yeah, she didn't tell everybody the secrets. Fantastic. No. Right? 
and the back rear tire on the car is not like that bad kid. It's like that good kid, right? Right? The bad kid would all do all the bad stuff. The good kid doesn't. You look at that back tire, and it's not flat even when it's cold outside. Why? Because it's a good tire. Right? That, remember that you, you just get the good kid and be in a bad relationship with the, the, the girls, the woman you were in a relationship with, her kid sucked. Now you're in a relationship with a lady and then her kid's great. You show up at the house, the kid's just playing video games. You're walking, hi, Mr. Jim, right? Right, you tell you try to discipline the kid, not a hit discipline, but oh, don't do that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You're sorry? You're not going to throw anything at me? No, why would I do that? That's sick. I wouldn't throw anything at somebody. Though you're a good kid. Oh, yeah. So now my four tires are good kids and good relationships. And I'm telling you right now, I don't matter at all anymore. I'm glad they're gone. I hope they got melted up in there on several different cars with other tire stuff from good tires. Maybe there'll be a good influence on them. But there's something in the back of my mind that makes me think that those evil ass tires are going to come back at some point. Right. I get this distinct feeling I'm going to be sitting there. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy a motorcycle and I'm going to come out one day and I'm going to say, I'm going to ride my new motorcycle. I always wanted to have a motorcycle. and This is great. And somebody's going to side swipe my motorcycle. I'm going to, hey, man, you side swipe my motorcycle. And he's going to go, I'm sorry, sir. I was driving by at a normal rate of speed. And all of a sudden the tires just went crazy. and I crashed into you. I'm going to go, what? And I'm going to walk over to his car and I'm going to hear, I'm back, bitch. Oh, no. The bad tire has been recycled into a new tire and it's still evil. (laughs) I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this, Anthony, you're out of your damn mind. And I would have to say, you're right, I am out of my damn mind. But you're also out of your damn mind. Why? Because you just listened to this crap and guess what? You loved every second of it, didn't you? Of course you did. (laughs) Folks, I'm out of here. This has been episode number 343 of the S. Anthony Says Podcast. Thank you very much, you weird bastards, for stopping by and spending this time with me. I will see you again next week. But before I go, you know the drill. You know the drill, my friends. You know what I got to say before I go? Got to give you the information because this might be some new people. This podcast can be heard everywhere. Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker Radio, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Podbean, iTunes. So if you dig it, subscribe and tell friends. And just remember, there's 342 other episodes before this. So if you're new, go back and listen to some of the other stuff. You'll love it. And I love you guys, you bastards. I'm going to say goodbye to you, my friends. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to say goodbye to you the way I always say goodbye. And I want you to do it with me on the count of three. Are you ready? Of course you are. Let's do it on count of three. One, two, three. S. Anthony. Out. Time while up in here. Go, yes.